Oh no, this is the worst thing in beekeeping. This is gross and I hope it doesn't happen to you. Today I'm going to help you make sure this doesn't happen to your honey super. We're going to go out to the hive today, harvest a honey super. I'm going to show you what to do if you can't harvest it right away to avoid all of this happening and ruining your honey. Hey Beak Squad, look at this hive. It's almost as tall as I am and I'm a pretty tall guy. Papa Head David joins us in the bee yard today. We're actually gonna open this hive up because you can see here it's got two honey supers on. I don't like to winter with two honey supers on if I don't have to. This box here is just an empty shell to surround my Burns feeder. I've been feeding them now to this fall. So we're gonna open it up today, see if we can uh, take off one of these honey supers and just leave one on. If you're interested in the Bee Squad hat or the Bee Squad shirts, we do have those available. Here's a link for those if you're interested. I think they're pretty cool. Let's get into this hive, see what's going on. I can't get over how dark it is. It's about uh, uh, almost 4.35 in the afternoon. It's not that bad, but it's just so cloudy right now. Yeah, here's my feeder where I've been feeding the bees. I like to smoke through the little openings here to calm the bees down a little bit. Pretty restless today. All the bees are home. This is fall. This is a tough time to be inspecting bees because it's late in the day, a little dark outside, a lot of humidity in the air. I'm surprised how humid it looks. So um, in all purposes I think the bees would be much more defensive on a day like today. That's why I'm suited up and ready for a uh, battle I guess. Just going to use plenty of smoke for sure. Whoop! bump my camera. Alrighty there's the super. So look at that. It's not really capped over. I thought we would see this top super maybe capped over but I don't see that there. Looks like there's a lot of open cells. Possibly the queen could be up here laying. Let's, uh, we can pull this frame out of the middle. Normally I start on the edge pulling frames out, but I think I can get by with pulling this frame out right here in the middle um, because there's not any uh, comb that's kind of lapped over into the other frame beside it. Yeah. I think that's what I'll do. Let's pull that middle one up here. This will give us quicker access to see what's going on. Look at these frames. I don't remember having these types of frames. Hmm, interesting. Made in the USA. These white frames, I got them a long time ago apparently. Oh, this might be capped over. It might be deceiving. Let's take a look. It's getting more capped over as I raise it up. The little top part wasn't really capped over. It's propolized together nicely. Propolis or propolis? Leave a comment below. What do you say? Propolis or propolis? <laughs> when I first started beekeeping, I think I said propolis. P-R-O, propolis. But then I started talking to people and they were like, no, no, David, it's propolis. Oh, wow, that is nicely capped over. Beetles! Doggone beetles. I tell you, putting my hives down here in the shade uh, did not help my beetle population decrease at all. All right, well, that's the middle frame. Uh, so this really tells us a lot. It tells us that the queen's not up here. There's no open cells, it's all kept over. And so that tells us that we can take this super and harvest it. And that, that gets us back to where we really need to have this hive, only two deeps and one super. And so now we just have to get the bees off of here. I could brush them off, I could use Bego. Now I've been making YouTube videos all the way back since 2008 for 15 years. A lot of you see me do stuff and you watch my video, maybe this is the first time you've watched one of my videos. And so I've tried about everything there's to try in beekeeping. So one of the things I have to do in my videos is kind of explain things because a lot of you will leave comments like, oh, why didn't you try that? Have you ever heard of this? And I've, I'm sure, I assure you I have. Today we're going to be using this product. I do like this. I've used this for a long time. I started to say a decade, but I don't remember how long. It's called Honey Bandit. It's, uh, it says nothing works better. Clear supers faster and friendlier than anything else available. And Actually, it does. And it doesn't smell like butyric acid, uh, bee robber fluid. You know, it doesn't have that terrible throw up smell to it. So we're going to see if we can get the bees out of here. I'm going to be using a sheet of burlap. It's kind of an ingenious idea, actually. 
I don't know why I've never thought about using burlap before. So, but burlap is pretty porous and I can just lay it on top of the hive here. And a couple of ways you can do this, you can spray it on the burlap first, lay it on there, or just start spraying it on here now. So let's do both, let's see what happens. So we got a lot of beads in there right now and we gotta run them out of the super so we can take it. So I'm gonna start just spraying it on here. Also wanna tell you guys that um, for me right now, I'm kind of in a quandary. I gotta do something with this super. And that that means I, you hear them roaring up, listen to them. Yeah, baby, get out of there. So I have to do something with it really fast, harvest the honey fast. If I don't, a pretty good chance there's small high beetle eggs or larvae just waiting to take advantage of this super. I'm gonna flip it over now. Boom. Trying to run the bees out of it so I can take it. So what I've decided to do, I don't have, the quandary I'm in, I don't have time today to harvest the honey and I don't dare let this sit overnight. If I do, then the beetles are gonna get the upper hand on it, lay eggs in it, or there could already be eggs. So what I'm gonna do is make space in my big uh, deep freezer, chest freezer, whatever, and I'm gonna put it in the freezer and I'm gonna freeze it until I do have time to harvest it. Isn't that a great idea? Is that working? Let's do it one more time. It smells good. I'm kind of getting some smell on me. By the way, if you use these um, type, types of uh, methods of getting bees out of your honey super, like a spray, like I said, or butyric acid or something, it, it doesn't harm your honey, doesn't leave any aftertaste or anything in the honey. It's just a way to run the bees out. Beekeepers have used it for trillions of years. <laughs> or I could just brush them off and that, that might work too. In this case, a lot of times, what I, I've made other videos, by the way, showing you how to use it. Usually I like to leave a little bit of edge uh, exposure like this, and that allows the fumes to kind of circulate around better. That's one way to do it. Yeah, believe it or not, I think I've made a video on everything you can imagine. Look at that. Isn't that great? Um, I'll try to leave a link in the description below where you can find this. I bought it at one of the bee stores, either Daydan or Man Lake or something, but I do like it. I'm just overdoing it now just because I want the bees out of there. So what usually happens, a lot of times the bees will actually move from the top of the supers, but they're still clinging to the bottom edge of this top super. So what are you gonna do, right? So what would be nice if we could get them all off of the top super, we wouldn't have to take them off frame by frame, we could just take the whole box off. But I'm ready to look, how about you? Some of you have told me that you have trouble separating boxes that it's so hard to do sometimes because uh, propolis really gets these boxes glued together, doesn't it? Look at that, man, that is tight. Wow. So sometimes what you need is two hive tools, kind of like taking off a bicycle tire. You have to kind of use one screwdriver to get it started and the other one to get the tire off. <laughs> Boy, that has some weight to it. Woo, I'm talking about weight, people. In the north, up in the Midwest, we say people. Like, plural for people in the north is you people. I grew up in the south. Plural for a lot of people is y'all. Even in the north up here, sometimes we say youans. I don't say youans, but I've heard other people say youans. What are youans doing? <laughs> Crazy. All right, where do I put this? I'm trying to decide because it's going to be so heavy. You know, I'm thinking about backing up my golf cart. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do a one drop, because I don't want to sit there and break my back twice. I think I can squeeze my golf cart right in here beside it. This is usually when I start damaging things. <laughs> That's usually when I knock over a hive. I'm trying to see out of my bee veil backwards, trying not to run over a sign over here. Well, I think I'm gonna make it happen. Whoa, I almost hit the horizontal hive. All right, let's be careful. Well, I'm not close enough. Let's redo. One time my mom was parking a car in a parking lot and she was really kind of a over conscientious driver. And you know, she was fine. I mean, you didn't have to move the car anymore, but she kept backing up, pulling forward, backing up, pulling forward, getting it perfect. That's crazy. Well, I'm not gonna do that. All right, that's good enough right there. So this ought to give us a chance to take this off 
and maybe move it right over on to, um, yeah, right onto the golf cart. Look how dark that is, wow. All right, all right, well, let's see if our fluid's still chasing bees out. Oh yeah, much better. All right, did we get all the bees out? Let me uh, put it up on its edge and see. Oh, wow. Well, get the camera to see that. You guys are in the wrong spot. Look at that. There's just a few bees in there. Holy cow. I am so happy with Honey Bandit. Wow, did that clear that super out? Golly, I mean, there's a few bees, but that's crazy. Woo, that is a success. So I think what I'll do is just move it over to the golf cart. Um, I'm gonna kind of keep it standing up, I think. No, it'll fall over, let's lay it down. It's just so heavy. One thing about beekeeping, man, you gotta have a good back to be a, a beekeeper. Yeah, now we definitely have to freeze that. I think I chased out the beetles, who knows? All right, let's get back over here and look at this next super. We'll go ahead and lay my burlap over the top of the super to keep bees out. Not many bees are flying right now. Uh, it's dark and starting to cool off a little bit. Just in case, let's get that topped over there like that, covered up. Now, let's take a look at this hive here. This is one super on top that I'd like to leave on for winter. Okay, I'm looking at these frames. I can pull this one up very easily and I'm gonna do that. Like I said, normally I start on the edge so I don't roll any bees like a queen or something. And then I just work my way over. But for speed today, I'm gonna pull this frame up all by itself. That middle frame will tell us if there's any brood in this super, right? It would be on, the queen usually is more in the center where she lays her eggs. So we'll get a look at this. Love the J hook. The J hooks have that special hook on them that allows us to get in between frames. And I was a protester of the J-hook. Boo, J-hook, I thought when it first came out. I like my traditional hive tool. Boo, J-hook. I'll never use a J-hook. And here I am using a J-hook. I love them. <laughs> Gotta be open-minded, people. Oh, wow, look at that. Yep, this is all just capped over honey. There's no brood up here. Look at that. Yeah, I have such good bees that make so much great honey. Oh, there's a beetle. Right in the center. Gonna be hard to kill that beetle without smashing a hole in the honey. Um, what do I do? Uh, well, I wanna kill it, but I don't wanna poke a hole in my honey. You can't ever pick a beetle up with gloves on. Oh, it's going for the wood. Oh, woo! <laughs> now tell me that doesn't feel good, unless you just never had beetle problems. Let me show you how many bees are actually in this hive. Look at that. Look at this, uh, look at this deep right here. Look at that. Can you see that? I mean, there's a lot of bees in there. Well, we're not gonna put a feeder on that hive because that hive has got so much honey on it. We're not gonna worry about feeding it. Let's put the top back on though. That'll help the bees get orientated back into the front. All right, back here by uh, back of my workroom. And what we're going to do is put this honey super without any bees in it. That got all the bees off so good. We're going to put that in my freezer just because I can't harvest it for a while. So let me show you how I do that. Put the old back to work again. Boy, that's some weight right there, people. Mm. All right. So by freezing it, I'm gonna really kill all any beetles or beetle eggs in there. Now, years ago, this used to be Sherry's freezer. And now, once I got into beekeeping, it became my freezer. <laughs> Don't tell Sherry. It'd be our little secret. Like when Sherry says, David, go out and give me a pork roast out of the freezer. I just run to the store real quick and bring it back and say, okay, here you go. <laughs> Look at that. I hope it fits in there. That's where I usually put them. Oh, perfect. Woo, baby. And by the way, by freezing a honey super like this, I'm gonna save myself uh, the trouble of getting this thing uh, from getting overtaken by beetles. Let me show you a frame right here where I brought some, I brought a super in I left it one week before I got a chance to harvest it without freezing it. I just laid it in my shop next to the extractor. Take a look what the beetles did. So by freezing it, this is going to preserve the honey. 
Oh, and by the way, look at this. I actually installed uh, a little thermostat here. I have it set up in my uh, ADT alarm system. So if the temperature gets around 10 degrees, which it might activate, uh, it will uh, cause ADT to call me and tell me my freezer is thawing. Wow, I just had to stop. I wanted to spend more time out in the bee yard, but it just got too dark. But it is a beautiful sunset. It's a beautiful evening. But this was my last day where I could really work some bees. I got a lot of footage, but I'll tell you what, it's going to be a high of 54 degrees Fahrenheit tomorrow. So going to be cold this weekend, cooling off. So I'm glad I got some footage. Going to be a while before I can get back in there. But I want to let you guys know, I really appreciate you being a part of my channel. I love you guys. I, I, we had a great live stream yesterday and it was so fun. Sherry and I had a great time with Jessica Fairfax. We, all three of us, we shared together our personal stories of beekeeping and fun things about us. And you guys really responded so well about that. That's so good. Thanks for being a part of my live stream. You guys are known as Beak Squad. Where's my hat? Yeah, here it is. Put my hat back on, Beak Squad hat. Oh, because uh, we are part of a family. We're part of a squad and we're called Beak, Beak Squad. So I really appreciate you guys so much. And if you want to see that live stream where we talked about our personal lives, some stuff uh, that you guys asked us, here's the live stream replay right here. Check it out. See you over there.